Hey everyone, what's going on? My name's Alex. Welcome back to my little corner of the internet. Today, I'm going to be talking about what should be in your guitar toolkit and showing you what's in mine. So, a guitar toolkit, what's one of those? So, what I believe a guitar toolkit is, is a collection of items that you think you're going to need when you're out playing live, when you go to practice, when you're doing, you know, relatively low-key maintenance on your guitar, you know, maybe a very, very kind of limited tour, basically a collection of items that you think you're going to need just in case something goes wrong. So, the general rule of thumb that I have is with perishables and cheap items and, and, and that kind of thing, however many you need, take one more than that. So if you think, hey, I'm only going to need two extra packets of plectrums on this tour, take three packets of plectrums because you will need them. You'll go through them like you would not believe. You'll drop them uh, someone will want to have one after a gig, which is always kind of weird, I've thought, especially when you're just using like normal Jazz 3s or whatever, but there we are. So, here's my bag of stuff. My name isn't Stanley, but he sure as hell did put up a fight for this box. We're going to have a look at what's inside here. So, first of all, very, very straightforward, but it is amazing that people forget some of this stuff. And you might be watching this thinking, hey, this is so obvious, of course I'd bring spare X with me. I've seen it done, boys and girls. I've seen it done. Spare cables, okay? So whether or not this is um, a speaker cable or an instrument cable, bring some spares. Just don't go, oh, I only need three for the tour. You know, stuff gets lost, stuff gets stolen, stuff grows legs and disappears. So, extra cables. You know, there's a lot of places where if, you, if you're playing a gig, you can go to a guitar shop and, and buy some last minute emergency supplies. But say you, you're running late on travel, you, you know, it's closed for whatever reason, that leaves you up the spout with, without any comeback. So, always spare instrument cables. Let's have a look what's in the box, shall we? As I said, spare picks. So this is just a collection here of the random picks that I have there, but let's open this bad boy. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so on the top, what do I have? I've got my little tray here. So I have got some uh, lithium ion batteries, um, sort of the these uh, sort of disc shaped ones, and I'll explain why in a minute. I have got uh, a a truss rod, uh, a truss rod adjuster tool thing. I've got some nine volt batteries. The reasons you might need these are to replace in active electronics inside your guitar. Uh, replace batteries in a pedal or replace batteries in one of those old-school wireless systems as well. So 9 volt batteries, take some with you. You can buy a mass of them on, on Amazon for relatively cheap. So make sure those are there. Again, spare guitar picks. So I'm using uh, Dunlop Jazz 3s because I think they're really, really nice. Those will set you back about a five or a packet. Um, but whatever whatever picks you're using, please just just take more than you need. Um, and I've also got some uh, I've also got some little um, also got some little cable ties in here as well, just to just to kind of tie stuff down if uh, if your cables start to get a little bit um, a little bit excitable uh, when you're on tour or playing live on your pedal board, and you just need to tie them down a bit. Uh, I've also got a uh, a little string winder here as well. Uh, a manual string winder, uh, you know, changing strings, take some of the F out. Lovely stuff. So, looking into the actual contents itself, let's see what we've got. So, you know, I was saying earlier about spare strings. So, these are the guitar strings that I, I use. Only ball, super slim clean, 9-42s. Always have a few pairs of spare strings with you because at some point you will break a string or sweat will corrode your strings during a live show. 
um, you know, your, your, your sound will suffer, and you will need to change your strings at some point. Um, notice I said do have several sets with you, um, because as I said in an earlier video, I broke my top E string, took the one out of this, and then broke that as well. So I'm currently without an E string because I didn't listen to the advice that I'm giving you now. I did not. Uh, right, what's next? Um, okay, screwdriver. So this is just a, a little mini screwdriver with uh, multiple multiple heads. Again, you can you can buy these really cheap in hardware stores or online. Something like this will save your bacon, no doubt. If you need to get back into the back of a guitar, or take apart a pedal to put in a new battery or something like that, little screwdriver kit like that. Um, make sure you get the ones that have both kind of Phillips heads and just a flat head as well. Um, again, it'll save you bacon. Let's see what else we've got. Uh, for some reason, I've got a guitar nut in there, which I need to put on my Squire. Um, ah, here we go. Now, this is something completely unnecessary. So this is this is actually an Ernie Ball electric string winder. And what you do is you turn it on. Like so. Hang on. Ah! Stubborn little bugger. And it takes all the fuss out of winding your strings when you go to change them on your guitar. It's a really cool little electronic tool thing there. Not really necessary, but still kind of fun anyway. It takes takes a lot of the manual hassle, even of the little string winder doobery. Um, yeah. Okay, what else? Spare strap. Straps get lost, straps get stolen, straps get used as a belt. So, uh, and they break it uh, every now and again as well. So, uh, take a spare strap with you. I've got this very, very cool lightning motif one that came with the uh, the Squire Affinity um, from, from a 14-year-old, I think. Um, he also had a lot of Kirk Hammett guitar picks in the bag as well, so... I wonder who his uh, his favourite guitarist was. Uh, a capoo, a capo, in case you're planning on doing any of those uh, acoustic songs or, or anything like that, you know. So that so what this does, it, this goes on the neck of your guitar and it just creates a false uh, a false nut essentially or a false zero fret, uh, a, a fret of your choosing as you pop it along the guitar and then you can play it in different keys without having to tune and, and all that kind of thing. What else? Okay, uh, as I said before, spare cables. So I've got a multitude of spare patch cables here. So uh, patch cables uh, like this are for connecting pedals. Uh, I've got a couple of them here. I've also got, what else have I got in here? Ah, here we go. Yeah, so I've got some, some a uh, couple of nice Planet Waves ones as well. But I've also got, and you can always have a couple of these as well. I've also got a spare power adapter cable for my power supply to power my pedal. So it's always good to have a couple spare of these as well. Um, just, again, stuff goes wandering at live shows and even in practice you can lose them. So make sure you've got backups, all right? Now we're getting towards the bottom here. One thing that I am missing, f one thing that I am missing from this that I'm sure was in here was uh, a multi t uh, a multi tool like a Leatherman or something. Now the only reason I have that in there is for the pliers uh, or the uh, the wire cutters. Sorry. So when you're changing strings, you'll need a set of wire cutters to to trim the ends off, uh, especially if you've got a uh, a Floyd Royce bridge as well, because you need to snip the ball end off too. So a pair of wire cutters, exactly. Again, not listening to my own advice. Um, you can get, I believe, there is a Dunlop um, uh, string winder and wire cutter kind of incorporated into the same item. So that costs about £10, I think. Um, yeah. So getting to the bottom now, uh, I did have this T-bar for, um, for uh, hex sockets, but I actually found this pretty useless. So what I, so what I got instead was this thing. Now what this does, I'm going to have to show it to you up close a little bit. It's got your, it's got a, a Phillips and a, uh, and, and a flat head on there. But it's also got 
in plastic, so it won't scratch any of the finishing on your uh, on your on your metallic hardware. These are all kind of a hard plastic, so this has got all the different socket sizes. So you can adjust your jack, you can uh, tighten pots, you can uh, rejig um, tuning pegs uh, up on the uh, up on the headstock. You can do it with this plastic tool and. I've used it for a little bit and I think it's fantastic. It's dead streamlined as well, really, really nice and small. And uh, it's not going to get in the way like that great big T-bar thing does. Next up is a guitar multi-tool. So what I've got here is I've got uh, a little ruler which you use to measure the action. We've got uh, a couple of different screwdriver heads. And we've, and we've also got our big Allen keys there as well. On the flip side, let's pull all these out. We've got a, oh, one at a time. We've got a truss rod adjuster, which is this one here. Don't know why I'm tapping that one. We've got a flathead screwdriver. We've got, I'm gonna lie, I have no idea what that does, so if you do, please let me know in the comments. And then we've got our fine adjustment, then we've got our small Allen keys here. So this one here, this thin one, this is really useful for adjusting the action on Fender style bridges. And uh, these other ones, are, are, you know, you can use them on uh, Floyd Roy's bridges and, and, and other small Allen key type things. So this is a really, really useful tool. So this and that little plastic tool. I find absolutely invaluable having, you know, already 75% of all the tools that I'll need on hand in two little instruments there. Um, if you really wanted to, you could pack a soldering iron as well. Um, depends how long you're going to be away on the road for, how much damage you're expecting and how much work you actually want to give yourself while you're out and about. And I have seen people do that, but... Um, I tend not to think it's worth it. If, if something goes drastically wrong with the guitar, um, to the point where you need to crack out a soldering iron on tour, uh, you know, you've got bigger problems. And you do have backup guitar. You should be taking a backup guitar with you as well. So, uh, so do that. Do that. And finally, finally, in my guitar toolbox, I have a couple of rags and I have some, cl and I have some cleaning fluids as well. So, uh, you, you can actually buy all three of these in uh, in a value pack. So, these this is the Dunlop stuff. I realize I'm, I've got a lot of Dunlop stuff here, but they make really good stuff for guitar maintenance and, and picks and that. So, without any, in no particular order, I've got Dunlop uh, 65 Guitar Cleaner. I've got uh, Dunlop Fretboard 65 Ultimate Lemon Oil. So use this to clean your fretboard separately. Uh, don't use it on maple fretboards, please. Dries it out. And then we've got, which I tend not to use this stuff. I tend just to change my strings. But if you want to get a little bit more life out of your strings, you can use this stuff, which is the, uh, ooh, where are we going? Which is the string ultra gliding conditioner stuff. So th this will give you a little bit more life in, on your strings. And... Because you're sweating after, I mean, every guitarist should do this anyway. Because you're sweating after a show, you're sweating on your guitar during practice, you need to clean your guitar much more often than you think you do. So make sure you clean your guitar because otherwise your, your metallic parts will corrode uh, and everyone will just have a sad time. And like I say, you can get a little bit more life out of your strings if you use that string glider stuff as well. So that is pretty much everything in my uh, in my guitar toolbox. What do you guys think I've missed? Is there anything that you think should be in there? If so, let me know in the comments down below. Oh, also, yeah, if you're going to practice or a gig, take a spare guitar with you and maybe a uh, maybe a guitar stand, which I've got over there, but I can't be bothered to show you because it's in a corner. Um, spare guitar, definitely. Let me know what I've missed in the comments guys let me know if there's anything that you would take to a gig or to a practice or on tour in a small emergency box that I've not mentioned here 
I hope this has given you some really good ideas about what might be in your guitar kit. And I hope at some point down the road, something happens and you're able to say, Hey, I have this tool and I'm going to save your butt because I've prepared. Remember, boys and girls, if you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. One has been Alex and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.